Good morning, everyone. This is Pierre Bertrand at CRM Dynamics. The agenda today, the topic today is Dynamics 365 for Project Services. I'm going to spend about 10 minutes just to give you an idea of what the beginning to end flow is, i.e. how does that tie into a full sales cycle, sales process, because it's part of Dynamics 365, which many people understand as being just a CRM package, but it's really not. There's much more in there. And that's what I wanted to show you today is how it ties in together. So this is meant for people that are not necessarily familiar with Microsoft Dynamics 365 CRM, just to give you an overview. So let's get started. So from beginning to end, the flow typically looks like lead, account, opportunities. So you start with your lead, comes in from a trade show, from your website, etc. You verify that it's a real lead, you create the account, it becomes an opportunity. From there you can, you can track it through the different stages of an opportunity. At one point, you might want to create one or several quotes. This then becomes a project if you get the work. And once you get the work, you then execute on the project, you and you start to manage resources, time entry, and project reporting. So I'll take you through this in a, a quick overview. From a lead perspective, just like any other CRM system, you start with your leads, you create a new lead, your screen pops up, you decide to put in there might be some information that is mandatory. You might want to put in a process bar that guides your team through the different steps to move a lead from active to developed, etc. And you obviously will need to put in information on your lead. And on all the screens that I'll show, you'll see an area like this that shows post assistant activities. That's where at one point you will see all your emails, contacts, phone calls, meetings, anything that pertains to that lead and that is useful for people to know all the interactions. And you can also obviously put in notes with attachments. So you fill in your lead information, you put in your contact, the account. Once you've got all that and you save it, then you actually have a lead and you can start putting some information here. So you obviously put in a budget. Typically, you want to put in purchase process. You can put in a lot of information here. And once the lead is good and you qualify it, it becomes an opportunity. So here I show you an opportunity. It's still for Adam at Chick Department Store. It's for a CRM implementation. I'm going to use an example of a CRM or a services uh, project later on. But this applies to some of our clients are in the material handling business and they do what's called an allied installation, i.e. they set up racking. Uh, they can take out old racking, put in new racking. We have some clients that are in the HVAC business. They sell and install large HVAC units. We have some clients that are in the cleaning business, so they can go in and, and clean uh, with either their team or with subcontractors, different areas of a plant or facility. So it can be used by a whole variety of, uh, of industries and applications. So in your opportunity, if you scroll down, you see what we call opportunity line. So your opportunity is for something, obviously. When you are using project services, you now have access to what's called project baselines. And these are lines against which there is a project attached and against which eventually we'll be able to put in time and expenses, track progress, actual versus budget, cost versus sales price, etc. So this can be either fixed price or time material. And if we go down here, we have product baselines, which could be a uh, support agreement. It could be an HVAC rooftop unit. It could be 50 beams, three conveyors, anything that is product based and that has a sales price, sales amount, etc. can be put in there. And if we go down even lower, we see in still in our opportunity that we have quotes. So quotes are really scenarios. So you can create two or three different quotes for all the project based and product based items to show I'm using a, a certain team. I'm using offshore resources, I'm using subcontractors, I'm using OEM parts, I'm using third-party parts. So you can create as many variations of a quote as you want. And these quotes, these variations are what you would send to the client. So you can create several variations of the quote, figure out which one you want to send to the client, you send it out. When you win the business, then that becomes active. So now let's look at a quote. So I'm just opening up the quote that we had here, which is for our uh, project information, CRM quote two. So what happens when you have a quote, you're in an opportunity, you create your quote. I showed you there were two quotes there. 
the minute you create it, all the information flows through all your contracting units, all your opportunity. See, it's all tied together. Everything that's around billing rates, everything that's that's a setup for that account moves automatically to the quote. If I scroll down in my quote, I see the same lines. So I have my consulting work, my development work, and my product based line. So a quote has all the same items as your opportunity. It's just where you actually put the pricing and where you do your scenarios in here. Okay? So let's open up one of these quote lines. So here we go, we go consulting work. So you see here in my quote line details, we see it's consulting work, it's fixed price. We can put an amount directly here if we want. Say it's going to be a fifty thousand uh, dollar job if you want, uh, and then you can, if you want, also you can put in detail lines. But one of the things that's really nice about project services is what you can do is attach a project. You can see this quote line here as a project attached to it. Called CRM Consulting Two. What the process is, you create your project, and then you can uh, send that over to your delivery team. They can look at it. They can adjust time if needed and uh, tell you, hey, we're good, we agree, this is a good quote for it, and then you can populate your, your quote with the details of the project. I'll show you how that works. So for now, let's just go quickly to the actual project, the CRM Consulting 2 project. So here's my CRM Consulting 2 project. Same thing again, you're in your quote line, you create your project, the minute you pick your customer, all the information moves through, so it's no, you don't have to re-enter anything. The fact that I picked a, uh, that I've got a project here, I created this project using a template. So what it does is automatically, based on my start time, puts in a finish time, estimated hours, estimated cost. So all the information is populated automatically based on my template. Now a template is obviously not what you want to use for your quotes as is. In most cases, you want to go in and modify it. So I'm just going to show what that looks like. So you can go into your project and you can see your work breakdown structure, which are the tasks your estimates, your project tracking, so you can see once the project is active, your actuals, how much are we invoicing against this project, how are we tracking cost against price, against budget. Uh, you can see your resource requirements, who do you need. Uh, you can see your team members. So for now, let's go to the work breakdown structure. This looks very familiar uh, and very similar to Microsoft Project because it's really the same thing. It's based on Microsoft Project, and if you want, you can import and export back and forth to Microsoft Project all your Gantt chart and all your tasks. So what we have here is, this was based on my template, it, it filled in all the information for me, but you can just as easily go in edit effort, you can add tasks, you can delete tasks, you can indent. So really you pass this over to your services team, and then they adjust, make all the adjustments they want. That, obvious, that automatically changes your estimated cost, your timeline, etc. So once they're, they're happy with it, you as a salesperson are happy with it, then you go back to your quote. So back to our quote, here was my quote again, my consulting work, here's my CRM consulting too. So there's something called import from project. So what I'm going to do is import from project all my quote details. So you can summarize if you want by uh, task type, by role, etc. Then when you bring it in, before my quote line details were empty, now I have all my quote lines. So you're able now to send to the client not just a quoted amount, but if you choose so, you can give them all the detail of what their project is going to be comprised of uh, and who's going to do it, and you can pick which columns you show them and, and really customize this to be able to give them a quote that matches what they want to see. So you've got your opportunity. You create your opportunity lines, you create a quote, you won the business. So let's look at, at once you win the business, how that works. So back to the project. So we have our project, we won the business. So we now want to generate a project team. You can see here with our tasks that we have tasks that happen at the same time. So if we have 40 hours required by an analyst in a given week, and another 40 hours for the same week required by an analyst, but for a different task, the same role, that means we'll meet two analysts for that week. So what Generate Project Team does is it looks at all your tasks, the timing, the role that you need, and how much of that time you need per week. It is going to figure out how many people you need for each role and when they're needed. So when you click on that, and you then see but my project team members, it, it assigns generic resources for now. When you actually assign someone, they'll show the name of the person. But it shows functional consultants. I need someone from this date to this date, someone from this date to this date. See, there's no an overlap. 
120 hours, 40 hours, and here's the assigned hours. So you can see all the details here. So you have different options. So you can pick a resource, and you can go in and maintain bookings, and you can book the resource. So if you want to give your project manager or your resource manager the capability to go in and book their resources themselves, you can do that, and I'll show you that. The other option you have is to submit a request. So if you have a centralized person managing your staffing, you can submit the request. You can pick the resources that you want, submit the request. That then goes into a queue. If I'm the resource manager for your project, I would look at the queue. I would pick the requirement. I would pick a resource for you or a subcontractor or whatever else I think, whoever else I think can do the work. I will assign it. Then you would see then your project uh, resources being assigned. The third thing you can do is if you have large teams, if you have two, three, four hundred people, you can enable resource sign up. So you can show on an app that I've got these four, five, 10, 20, 70 projects available. Here's when they start. Here are the skills that are required. And here's that, how that matches to your skills. So if I'm someone that is a subcontractor for, to you, for example, and I have access to this application, I can see what's coming down the pipeline. I can say, oh, I've got someone available that can do this work. I can basically express interest, show I've got the skills. Here's what I can provide, here are the hours, and here are the tasks that I can help you with on your upcoming projects. Let's look at the booking. So I've picked a, re a requirement. It shows me uh, filters on the left. So the screen that shows me you can pick, uh, to be able to clean this up, you can pick if you want an organizational unit, if you have different branches, business units, you can pick contacts, user, you can add subcontractors or teams. So if you have a lot of resources, this list might be quite long, so you might not want to see everyone. So this basically allows you to filter it down so that it's more manageable. And here it only shows you people with the right skills, obviously. Uh, so here, if you, put, if you pick this resource here, for example, there'll be 40 hours. If you pick this resource, they'll be overbooked. So it shows you who's available, who's got what booking. It shows it to you against the, the weeks. It shows you how many hours you need for this person. What you can do is pick a couple different people on the list and compare. So what happens, I've picked Bernadette, I've picked Diana. It shows me their comparative skills. It shows me the target utilization, if they had different costs. If Bernadette, for example, was making 120 bucks an hour, but Diana was making 70, it would appear here, and all the, and this, the numbers would be adjusted appropriately. So you can pick the resource you want, click book resource, and the person is booked. If instead I had picked, as I mentioned to you earlier, submit the request, if uh, I'm the approve, approver or the resource manager, I go to the resource request, I can see all the different requests that people have made for people, for resources, I can see which projects are for, the range, and same thing, I can pick uh, a resource, I can click find resource, it brings up the same screen for me, it shows me all the people that are available, uh, what hours they have booked already, and then I can basically pick someone and I can go ahead and assign the resource. Now once your resources are assigned, you actually get to work on the project. So the first thing people will do as they start to work is put their time. So time entry, this is what the screen looks like. You basically pick the day you want to put your time entry in. You pick your duration. You pick the type of work it is. You pick your project, your task. It'll show you if you want just the ones that you're assigned to. You can put some comments that are internal, some comments that will appear on client documents, and then you save. Once you save a couple of different entries, what it does is it, uh, it allows you then to submit them. So this is an area where you can, you, can pay, you can put your entries in for one, two, three days. It shows you a summary. It shows you what you previously submitted for the week, your grand total for the week. So if you end up being 80 hours, there might be a mistake. But if, you're, if you expect to report 40 hours, you'll, you'll see that you're under 40, so you still need to put in some entries in there. So then you submit and it goes against the project. You're good to go. If you look for, uh, and once you submit it, if I'm the one approving entries for your project, I see all the entries, I can pick one. I can, uh, when you pick it, you can approve it, you can modify it, you can change it to billable, to non-billable. You can increase, decrease the numbers. So very easy for people to manage all the different requests. Back to the project. You can see a couple different things. So I'm back to my same project here. There's something called the Actuals Associated View. So this gives you all the different entries against your project. So you might have some inter-organizational entries. It might be someone working from another organization, another business unit on your project. You might have some cost entries. You can see basically all the time and everything that's happening on your project. If you're looking at the project information or the summary, you can see, ah, I've got 1.75 hours on my project actual cost 210, 
but I've got a budget of 2,500 hours, so I'm really well within my budget. So estimated cost, 19.2, cost consumption, 1.09. So you're very, very low at this point. All your details are here. Now, if you're the resource manager, you also have access to another screen. So this is what we call the scheduling board. If you pick projects here, it shows you all the different resources that you have for your projects, and then you can drag and drop if you want project tasks that are unassigned directly onto different resources. We can set it up so that when you highlight a project task, it shows you only the people that, with the right skills uh, on the list here. So if you want to see who's, bu who's busy doing what, this is a really easy way. You set up your filters here. You say you want to see only a team or only a branch. You would see all the different people, and you would see what they're working on across. Here it shows uh, days, but you can set this up against as a week, as a month, or any other bucket of time that you want. So this is another view to be able to manage your resources. Now let's look at resource utilization. So I've got a large team. I'm managing my people. I want to see when do I start having time available because my boss wants to book a, a large project. So here you can see you have a day view, a week view, a month view, but it shows you really looking at your people again by team. You can set up by you can look at a team at a time, a business unit, a branch at a time, a role at a time, a scale at a time shows you who's available and, and what kind of booking they have against their time for a given period. So for example, you have developers or architects or people with skills in welding, depending on what you want to do. You might pick skill welding, see who I've got, how busy are they looking out these days or there's weeks, then you can see when you can start booking new projects or whether you need to start hiring because you're fully booked and you've got a backlog uh, situation happening. So this gives you some capabilities around the resource management. So there's lots more in there, but I just wanted to give you an idea of how the flow could work from a sales perspective to creating the quote, to populating your quote with your project detail, starting to work, work, work with your project, and then managing your resources. So we have a couple more videos on our Learning Academy and on our YouTube channel to give you a more detailed dive into project services, but th this was just meant to give you an idea of the flow. Thanks for your time. It's Pierre Bertrand at CRM Dynamics.